Welcome to the Do It All Dad Year podcast, what Gen X dads understand. Controlling our kids a comedy can make our kids great again. My three fuss-free kids, 98% of the time, are living proof of it. Three kids later, dates of my wife are rare. Last time we had one, the waiter asked, how are we doing tonight? I say, last time we had a night free from our kids, I got my wife pregnant again. We haven't ordered our drinks yet, but I already feel like I'm in the midst of a five-week rave in Germany, if you really need to know. Holla! Thank you very much! This is my impersonation of Jeff Ross, the Roastmaster General, roasting Jim Acosta from CNN. Does CNN just shove a mic in front of anybody with good hair who doesn't look too alt-rightish. Holla! Thank you very much! (laughs) So I've been banging out chapters for my upcoming book, The Cochetarian Comedian, about my pursuit to make the family meal great again. My pursuit to make my wife feel beneath me in the kitchen. (laughs) It's about my pursuit to grow closer to my kids through comedy and vice versa. It's about using my kids as open mics to develop their expressive prowess and for them to instruct me what to improve and what to completely overhaul if it sucks out loud a long time. All the time. Holla! Thank you very much! But, do it all that over here, aka Cochinary Comedian, is not whiffing very often. However, on occasion, you know, the wife will make comments about my uh, messy kitchen afterwards, which inspired a piece that I'm going to share with you right now that. I'm thrilled about. I wrote it off Adderall. (laughs) So I've got that going for me, Lord. And it's called Fussy About Fungi. Holla! Thank you very much! (laughs) I'm questioning. Is it Fussy About Fungi? Like, why would I say Fungi? Fussy About Fungi! Stupid! So stupid! Weird Al lives, VHF, holla, thank you very much. Here we go. Fussy about fungi. Let me take a sip of Guinness first. In honor of my 10% Irish side. And I do possess the gift of gab. So obviously I'll allocate some credit to my Irish side. But... At the same time, my Irish audience is thinking, well, why do you have to be such a gritty heeb and claim the 80% lion's share of the gift of Gabri? Because I'm assuming that's where you're allocating the special value placement for the rest of your funny man tongue. Holla! Thank you very much! (laughs) Growing up, Gotta get that sip in my system, buddy. Here we go. Growing up, my mom's kosher chicken cutlets only got interesting whenever she threw some sautéed white mushrooms and garlic and parsley on top. And there was never enough. (laughs) At the same time, these weren't meaty mushrooms such as the mighty meaty portobello, substantially chewy, scrumptious shiitake mushrooms, or delectable geisha light oyster mushrooms either. Whatever mushrooms they'd sold at A&P in the 80s and early 90s got the job done. Blue cheese and burgers wasn't a thing yet. Lamb burgers, forget about it. Back then, you were lucky to find a deli who made sandwiches with barely defrosted iceberg lettuce you didn't chip a tooth on, which looked more Bill Burr white than sickly discolored green whenever his dad threw on the old golden gloves for St. Patrick's Day again. Holla! Thank you very much! For the record, like those alleged jokes that Bill Murray did at the Grammys weren't even jokes. <laughs> but I don't want to 
to shock my flow. For Hanukkah, my mother always made her specialty stuffed, baked, destemmed baby Bella bomb mushroom dish with a delicious garlic parsley breadcrumb concoction with some cream cheese mixed in between to keep it chewy enough, <laughs> which helped counterbalance the Mariah Carey Christmas songs at full blast and constant rotation before Derek Jeter broke into her star-studded snatch before Puff blew it up beyond recognition. Holla! Thank you very much! So, I was bound to try recreating some magic mushroom love on my own someday and be a tad less gun-shy about munching on some magic mushroom tripping caps in college eventually. My senior year in high school, I'd order an occasional mushroom slice for lunch, so I wasn't fussy about eating the psychedelic, dry, woodsy, dried caps. Straight up, no chaser either. Illmatic lives. Holla. Thank you very much. I didn't asked my boarding school burnout bud, Gled Hill at the time, to place the magic tripping caps into a warmed up spinach wrap with some arugula and goat cheese to fend off any anxiety consumed panic attack on the horizon from eating the cow shit birth mushrooms by themselves alone, all alone, before the mushrooms actually kicked in. Heart lives, holla, thank you very much. <laughs> but my first brush with mushroom madness wasn't from getting an uncontrollable case of the giggles my freshman year in college around my old school deadhead crew within a dorm room the size of Hunter Biden's slow date stash closet. <laughs> Nor did I experience uncontrollable mushroom madness from feeling up a sequoia tree in the valley on some magic caps in the most sensual love thy tree like your hot neighbor with the big sunspot tits way feeling God's vibrating presence bursting from within before I receive a call my pre-smartphone from my tripping roommate in the park and hear that light piercing through the back of your head isn't God it's the police pull up your pants we're out of here holla thank you very much Dennis Lurie lives holla thank you very much pull up your pants no I had to make my own first batch of stuffed portobello mushrooms with spinach, peeled Roma tomatoes, and Fontina cheese to experience my first brush of mushroom madness because it felt like I was eating a dirt sandwich from a health food store in a 70s Albert Brooks movie as I muttered to myself, isn't Fontina cheese high in cholesterol? And how do you live with yourself charging sky-high prices for an overseas melting cheese not included in the fondue set I got as a housewarming gift from Penny Marshall after... Lost in America, bought me my place in the hills. That's how I got to cast Gary Marshall as the pit boss in Lost in America. You don't know who Gary Marshall is? Don't worry about it. All you need to know is there's no business like show business. Looking for comedy in the Muslim world lives. Ha! Thank you very much. The problem was I forgot to wipe the dirt off my mushroom caps from the nearby farmer's market. And I didn't have a personal shaman with an open third eye to point out my obvious, to point out my oblivious oversight. Uh, till then, I never knew what dirt actually tasted like because I had neck surgery at two. My parents shielded me from high contact sports like football. So I had no idea what a face full of dirt tasted like until I bit through my portobello sandwich, which turned me off from trying to unearth portobello magic for almost a whole decade on the backyard coal grill making sandwiches with goat cheese and bitter greens on ciabatta rolls instead down the line. Traveling Woolberries lives. Holla! Thank you very much! I felt so dirty after crunching on multiple bites of actual speck dirt. It felt like I was caught pleasuring myself to she stamp ads in the LA Weekly behind a garbage dump off Santa Monica Boulevard in broad daylight on a Tuesday at a hard 11 a.m. as the smell of musky ball sack permeates through Boys Town's air. Andy Dick lives. Holla. Thank you very much. The last time I experienced mushroom madness on this infuriatingly dejected level was this past Sunday. 
after I made the decision to give my kids a brush with mushroom magic by making them a Moosewood classic. Moosewood being a famous vegetarian restaurant and prolific cookbook publisher in Ithaca, New York. I transferred to Ithaca College my junior year because I outgrew tripping on mushrooms and feeling up trees in my spare time for the time being. <laughs> Still, I hate to be married to any script, unless I wrote it, of course, but even then, I like to mix things up and make things less dronishly, climax-free, predictable. So I decided to dice up the cleaned stuffed portobellos, brush with a mix of sesame and tamari sauce, which is a thicker yet slightly watered-down soy sauce. Think John Cho from Harold and Kumar go to White Castle, <laughs> and you'll get the gist. Those same stuffed mini UFO-sized portobello mushrooms were also filled with a combo of high-end peanut butter called Smooth Operator, an old-school peanut butter shop in the West Village, ginger, diced up red peppers, and shredded, dehydrated firm soy. Although the funky, fresh, umai twist was mixing these bomb supreme, magically flavorful fungi with some buckwheat soba noodles with all three of my kids, which all three of my kids slurped up with instant glee, almost instantly. Me taking two plus hours to make the entire dish helped my kids' readiness factor in their full-blown assault attack on the dish. Two, as we listened to Too Fast for Love on vinyl from Motley Crue from start to finish before Mama got home from work later that evening after working in lactation, playing the role of unofficial boob doctor, whisperer, consultant all day long. Along the way, I tapped into my age of innocence with renewed fervor and played an inspired air guitar version of Too Fast for Love with our broomstick, hailing Molly Cruz guitar slayer Mick Mars as the Freddy Krueger of shredding, who I need to write an article about one day in the hopes of selling it the fucking pitchfork guitar world or just posting another non-billable blog post such as shredding, hacking, hair metal, cliches, anything but bearing the brutal thought of not letting the world know more about the most underrated metal guitar shredder of all time. Too Fast for Love, Molly Cruz's dead album, which he recorded in two weeks straight max, is by far the most melodic, ferocious, heart-thumping, power-punk pop record ever put on wax by the four hair metal horsemen. WCW lives Holla! Thank you very much! Too Fast for Love is the hair metal version of Exile on Main Street by the Stones. When Mick Mars, the oldest member of his crew, made the guitar sound like a fucking buzzsaw out of hell, shredding those strings to shreds as if the child support payments from his first marriage in his late 20s depended on it. Now, I'm not comparing my leisurely recreation of some Sunday slow mushroom magic to Mick Mars playing with his back against the wall on Motley Crue's Too Fast for Love, although... Paying child support felt like the incoming imminent reality later that evening after I flipped out of my wife for pointing out how the food was great, but the kitchen needs cleaning. Words of wisdom, ladies. When your husband bangs out another all-star dinner after looking after the kids all weekend with no virtual grandparents in sight, resist the urge to minimize the specialness of the meal by treating him like the neutered fucking help. Next time, my wife wants to get intimate on e-pills for all time's sake, I'll say, but you haven't gotten me that promised boob job three kids later yet. I think I'll just fill up our tree in the garden instead. You're not the only stump humper in the relationship you know. And I'll talk to you guys soon.